brand new leak about the special counsel reports that Robert Mueller complained about the attorney general's four page letter saying it didn't capture, as Kristen reported, the full context of his investigation. So let's start there with Senator Mike Lee, a Republican from Utah who sits on the Judiciary Committee. He's going to be asking questions. Mario also has a brand new book out called Our Lost Declaration, America's Fight Against Tyranny from King George to the deep state. Great to have you with us tonight, Senator. Thank you. Good to be with you. Uh, okay, so you saw what Kristen reported there. You've seen some of these excerpts of this letter where Mueller said he was frustrated because he felt like the media reporting was not accurate as to the investigation. But as the DOJ spokesperson, Kerry Kupik, said, in a cordial and professional conversation, special counsel emphasized that nothing in the attorney general's March 24th letter was inaccurate or misleading. She said they went on you know, to agree that they would get the full report out with necessary redactions as quickly as they could. But no doubt he's going to take heat over that letter yesterday. No doubt he's going to take heat for it because the Democrats are already signaling to us that that's what they intend to do. But the fact is there was nothing inaccurate or misleading about it. And so what do they have left to complain about? Well, perhaps they didn't like the way it was characterized by the media. But they own the media for the most part, and they should take that up with the media, not with the attorney general. Okay, so what do you expect to happen tomorrow? Because Democrats are, they, they feel justified, and, and Congressman Jerry Nadler, House side Judiciary Committee has said he wants to see that letter from Mueller. He says Barr should have never hidden it because it came, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and it sh he should have seen it by now. Um, he's demanding answers about that. I would imagine some of your Democratic counterparts are going to have the same questions on the committee tomorrow. Yeah, I, I, I would love to find out what pressing questions he, he's got about that letter. I would love to find out what pressing questions he's got about why it took Mr. Mueller two years to conclude that there was no collusion with the Russian government. I'd love to know the answer to that question. The fact is, we've got a very significant deep state problem here. We've got a very significant element within the U.S. Department of Justice that appears to have been trying to delegitimize the outcome of the 2016 presidential election. That ought to disturb us. Well, uh, there is a letter out tonight from a number of your Democratic counterparts uh, headed up by Senator Maisie Hirono and a number of other people, including several of the 2020 contenders. And this letter essentially is asking the DOJ and Inspector General to launch an investigation into the Attorney General, also the Office of Professional Responsibility. And they say, listen, he wasn't impartial in that letter, in the press conference, that he hasn't been fair, and he's essentially acting as an agent of the White House and of the President. Okay, if that's what they're going to argue, I'd, I'd love to hear their response about Strzok, about Page, about the meeting on the tarmac in 2016. I would love to hear answers to a lot of other questions that we have never had answered. Uh, the fact is that this has been a very thorough investigation. It took them two years. They concluded that there was no collusion. And so now they're losing their minds because they've been rel relying on the Mueller report as this sort of holy grail uh, from whence was going to, to come all of these blessings. And they didn't have that, and they're frustrated. They want to take it out on bar. We can't let them to do that. Well, we'll watch tomorrow morning on that. I also want to ask you about Venezuela since we've got you here and this news continues to break tonight. Um, today, um, the former Ambassador Bolton has talked about this. Several of your counterparts, Republicans and Democrats alike, talking about the U.S., what role we would possibly play in this. Um, Senator Rick Scott from Florida talked about positioning the U.S. military for humanitarian, but also possibly for the defense of democracy. And there are a lot of concerns about whether the U.S. should get involved militarily. Um, all options are on the table, we're told by the administration. Uh, Congresswoman Alon Omar tweeting this today. We should be encouraging dialogue and free, fair elections in Venezuela. It seems like everybody agrees on that. She says, though, not violence. I believe U.S. intervention will only destabilize the region more and cause even more suffering. What role should we, shouldn't we be playing? Well, the role that we should be playing, first of all, should be determined by Congress. We have gotten away from this in recent years, but it's very important for us to remember that only Congress can, de can declare war. War is messy and it's fraught with moral peril. And any time American blood and treasure is going to be put on the line, Congress, as the branch of government most accountable to the people at the most regular intervals and constitutionally authorized to do this, needs to make the decision. We need to have a robust, roiling debate in Congress about whether to do that. And is, that needs to precede any military action. Is that what you would consider U.S. military incursion in any way into Venezuela if that happens? And everybody says that's, they don't want that to happen, but the administration isn't taking it off the table. Is that what you would consider war or something that Congress would need to approve? Yes. Uh, there are a number of ways that we can define warfare, but anytime you've got military action on foreign soil, there to destabilize the incumbent political regime, that certainly qualifies as war. Okay. Well, uh, this continues to unfold, and we'll watch in the hours ahead. Uh, Senator Lee, thank you very much.